Goldman was expecting the S&P to sell off around a half of 1% if non-farm payrolls were below 75,000 today. In fact, they were expecting a much larger than expected sell-off if non-farm payrolls was less than 20,000 in the neighborhood of 1 to 1.5% down on markets. Of course, the S&P was up a half of 1% today. But the bigger problem is really not the stock market at this point. It is the bond market. As Michael A. Gade on X says, what's going on in bonds is absolutely terrifying and seemingly no one cares. That is because 10-year treasury yields were up 10 basis points today as basically the bond market is imploding. As yields go higher, that means bond prices themselves are selling off. Now, this is not normally a huge problem because normally bonds are acting rationally. They're acting in regards to inflation expectations. They're reacting in regards to what the government is doing as far as the fiscal policy. They're reacting to what the Fed is doing. Not right now. The bond market is reacting to none other than who knows. In fact, we have no idea why the bond market is going up 10 basis points a day lately. And yeah, this is a big problem. At a certain point, the bond market becomes unhinged and derailed from reality. And I, I think we're already at that point now. And uh, what's to stop that from leading into equities? This move today was especially concerning because sure, we had 12,000 jobs added, 44,000 of which of a loss in manufacturing, Wall Street is saying is attributed to Boeing and another maybe 50,000 from the hurricane. Make up whatever number you want, but we still would have missed estimates, okay? This was still not a good report, no matter which way you want to sugarcoat it. So why did 10-year treasury yields go up? That's a big problem. Like, a, the biggest problem we've had in a long time. Let's just put it that way. And as I said in the last video, this is really the Trump trade that is getting priced into markets. Now, I don't agree with this trade whatsoever. I think under a Trump presidency, you're going to have um, probably in a recession, right? There's going to be less government spending. Long term, that's great for America, but short term probably leads to a recession. Recession That leads to lower interest rates, lower inflation, Thus, I mean, why would we, why are we seeing 10 year treasury yields going up? Well, what Wall Street is expecting, Wall Street is saying if Trump wins, there's going to be a better economy, there's going to be more inflation, there's going to be more government and deficit spending. That to me doesn't seem too obvious or, or likely, but that's what the markets are pricing in on the long end of the treasury curve. But it's really not the just the long end. It's the short end. It is the ultra long end on the 30-year treasuries. The whole entire yield curve is becoming unhinged. Now, there is really two different ways of thinking about this. And whether you fall in that category or, or, or the other category, you're going to take away different information from this video. Category number one, you're a short-term trader. You don't invest in the long term. You just trade on what's happening right now and what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. That's a camp that I hope you guys are not in. I hope you are to some degree traders, but also long-term investors. So I hope not too many of you guys are in that camp. But you're going to take away something if you are in that camp totally different than the other camp, which the other camp is you're long-term investors and you trade every now and again, or you're just long-term investors and you're, you have a longer term outlook on markets, whether that is three years, five years, 10 years, 20 plus years. If you're a long-term investor, I don't think you have a single thing to worry about betting on America to fail. You will always go, go broke. America will be fine either way. I think a year from now, we're going to laugh at the drama going on in the bond market. We're going to laugh at the potential correction that we get over the coming weeks. That's still my expectation is we get a 10% correction over the next couple of weeks. But if you're a short-term trader, 
Well, there's some things you probably need to know. First and foremost, it does not ha matter what's happening. We could have an asteroid hitting the Earth in 12 hours that was going to destroy the world, and you would still have hedge funds and institutions making bullish calls and commentary. And it, that's their job, is to really calm down investors. Their job is to keep people invested in the markets, even more so than it is to make them money. Like you might think a hedge fund or institution's job is to make money. That's less than half of it because the money will come. It's staying invested in markets, which is really what you know, Wall Street is, is is trying to do. Dan Niles here, someone I actually respect, says, with central banks cutting aggressively and governments stimulating even more, I think stock markets remain strong through the first half of 2025. It's a very kind of short-term naive thing to say if we do have all of these headwinds ahead, ahead of us. Now, I think that's going to happen. I think there's good chances that we have a good 2025. But there is also a very real risk that in the short term, we go through a correction and then growth slows down even more. That's the side of the equation that Wall Street is not talking about. Now, there's a magnitude of different ways you can position yourself for this. You can, you know, get ready for this. I like raising more cash. I don't think you can go wrong with cash. Having more cash is usually better than having none. And I actually think right now there's a fair balance of of risk out there, right? There's risk and reward, if you will. There's a, there's a plausible path towards everything is just fine. The economy does well. Maybe Trump does get in office like the bond market is pricing in, and there's less government spending, not a dramatic amount, but less government spending, less taxation, and interest rates fall more than expected, and we don't have another round of inflation. In that scenario, markets are going to be up 20 plus percent 12 months from now. Mark my words. That's not a super far fetched, plausible outcome, in my opinion. It's also not a super far fetched or improbable outcome that Trump or Kamala win really doesn't matter. There's more government spending, higher inflation, uh, maybe the economy continues to slow down. You know, that's also a pretty probable outcome in the longer term sense. I lean more towards the bull case there, but there's definitely some risk, especially between now and midpoint of 2025. And I think no matter if the coin lands on heads or tails, you want to be ready for either one of those outcomes. Now, as Jim Bianco writes here on X, the move index is the VIX of the bond market. It closed today at a new one-year high and the second highest level in 17 months. The bond market is pricing in extreme volatility in the near future. This is actually two standard deviations above average. So what that means is you're in the top 25% of instances of bond volatility, okay? And that's because bonds are not acting irrational. And we have the election next week. We also have the Fed meeting next week. Now, I can definitively tell you right now, at least for the Fed, I don't know who's going to win the presidency or if we're going to get a sweep or or a mixed, you know, Congress or whatnot. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. But what I can tell you is that the Fed does not like the rise they are seeing in longer dated treasuries, 10, 20, 30 year, seven year treasuries, five year treasuries. They do not like the move higher in yields we are seeing. The Fed tried to accommodate markets to, to ease the economy a bit. Instead, it's only tight in the economy since September 18th when the Fed cut rates 50 basis points. The Fed is going to sound super dovish next Thursday. If they don't, then I think the odds of a recession go up a lot more because I'm sure bonds go up a lot more at that point. The bigger question is, I think for the market's perspective right now, is the election. And I can tell you, that if Trump wins and there's a new change of regime, the markets may not like that, at least initially. Because if we're pricing in larger deficits, you know, more government spending, all these tariffs, if Trump wins, then that might, might actually become kind of the reality 
for bond market and stock market investors. If Kamala wins, then you will likely see bond yields go down, and I think that's actually the opposite of what should happen. I think, theoretically, you should see if Kamala wins, bond yields go up or stay where they are, and if Trump wins, bond yields go down, because I don't believe the whole Trump's going to cause inflation thing or larger deficits. I don't buy into any of that because of tariffs. Are you serious? He's not... It's it's a negotiating tool. So... I think over the next couple of months, no matter who wins, you're probably going to see bond volatility come down. Just like the VIX goes up, it doesn't stay up for that long, especially when it spikes. And the bond volatility has spiked, and it will probably come down over the course of the next couple of months. If it doesn't, then, I mean... Yeah, we have a big problem. I mean, we already have a big problem now, but we would have an even bigger problem if that were to happen. And I guess in another sign of the times, this could be something to be a little nervous about, especially if you're an older investor and you remember this, but NVIDIA is replacing Intel in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, an index that only consists of 30 blue chip stocks. What's actually interesting about this is Intel was added to the Dow Jones almost at the peak of the dot-com bubble in November of 1999. Intel shares were trading at $42.24. If you bought $10,000 in Intel then, you would only have $5,500 left today. NVIDIA upon this news in after hours is was up 2% today. It was almost like Wall Street knew this was coming. Let's be let's be serious. They knew this was coming. I, I, I say that as sarcasm because I say a lot of the time that stuff is leaked and and some of you guys may be annoyed by that, but it actually happens. You you literally seen that today. NVIDIA was outperforming seemingly for no reason. And then the news came out here and after I was there, they were being added to the Dow. Like somebody knew that somebody bought NVIDIA ahead of time. And now it's up another 3% in after hours. Call it corruption. Call it the perks of being a big money investor. I don't care what you call it. It does sound like things are getting a little, uh, Maybe not frothy is the right word, but a little too optimistic, especially when you look at history and conclude that when Intel joined the Dow in 1999, it was pretty much the peak of that market. At the same time, Amazon's founder, Jeff Bezos, files to sell 16.4 million shares of Amazon. An insider selling stock really doesn't mean too much. Bezos probably wants to buy another yacht or buy a new vacation house or something. Live life a little bit, you know? What, are you, what else are you gonna do if you're one of the richest people in the world? So it's not a huge sign of, of bad things ahead, but it's not a great sign either. And part of the issue in equities right now that at least I see, one of the reasons I think we could get a 10% correction, we've already fallen 3% from highs, uh, from all-time highs, is still, we see what's happening in the bond market. We understand the uncertainty around the election and around the economy, and the 12,000 jobs report we just got today was really bad, but yet we still have analyst notes coming out like this one from Oppenheimer's Ari Wald that says SPX cap weighted and equal weight, both making all time highs, signals ongoing advance. Don't fight the tape. We'd expect the advance to target 6,200 with near-term support just below the 50-day moving average. What's actually interesting on the S&P or specifically on the SPY is this 50-day moving average is in purple. What do you notice about the last three drawdowns that we've seen in regards to this purple line? Really, almost every drawdown, like like in recent history, in the last couple of years, anytime you hit this 50-day moving average, that's not when the selling tends to stop, okay? The selling tends to get worse after you hit the 50-day moving average. Sometimes you can bounce at that moving average, like here, almost, almost a textbook bounce, like literally almost perfect, August 1st. 2024. You bounce right at this moving average. You did sell off intraday. You closed above that 50-day moving average. Next day, you were down 2%. Day after that, you were down 
That was 5% two days after uh, hitting this 50-day moving average. And you did not bounce right at the 50-day moving average. So to assume we're going to get support at the 50-day moving average with this much uncertainty ahead of us, I think it's kind of a fool's game. I mean, here, you didn't necessarily bounce the 50-day. You fell below the 50-day by 1%. That's not a huge deal. You fell below the 50-day moving average here in August by about 6.3%. Here, once you broke the 50-day moving average, you ended up falling about 3%, right? When you break below or at that 50-day moving average, in which we just did over the past two trading days, you actually tend to break down further from there. You don't tend to actually get some solid support coming in for markets until you hit that 100-day moving average. And if you get a larger correction, that 200-day moving average tends to be where you find more material support that comes in. But it's not the 50-day moving average. And maybe analysts are saying this from a lack of knowledge Maybe they're just obsessed with the, you know, bull case right now, ignoring all the risk. Again, half of a hedge fund's manager's job is to keep investors invested in the fund, not necessarily make money, right? It's all about just keeping people invested. That's why a lot of the time when things look great, when stocks continue to go up, there really starts to be a lack of risk management in the short term. Again, as I said in the beginning of this video, if you're a long-term investor, you have nothing to worry about. Buy as you do every week, every month, keep doing what you're doing. But if you do realize the risks out there, if you if you are tactical in the near term while also investing for the long term, there's specific moments in time you can sit here and say there is elevated risk of a correction. And that is one of these moments. I mean, especially because you're already seeing this in the bond market. Like bonds have absolutely imploded in recent, you know, days, really since, again, September 18th. Bonds have imploded. Bonds have actually already fallen almost 10%, about 10%, almost exactly, from September 18th. Like, you've already seen a correction in bonds. Is it far-fetched to get a correction in stocks? Absolutely not. I think the biggest risk in the near term is if Tuesday's election, next Tuesday's election comes around, and we don't know who the president is, and there's uncertainty about who it is going to be. So really, in conclusion here, I think the near term is full of risks. I think... The easiest thing to do to hedge your portfolio is to raise some cash. Maybe get some cash ready in your brokerage account to go shopping, diversify a little bit. If you're on margin, that extra cash on the sidelines is going to make it so maybe you don't have to sell your stocks. The, the most important thing is you don't sell your stocks. You don't want to panic and try to time the markets. You want to stay in the markets. Okay, that's the easiest thing to do. There is an opportunity to hedge once you can confirm that the markets are going to freak out, whether it's a contested election or whether it's something else. Maybe the bond market is just truly broken. If that's the case, then it's going to get much worse from here. And it will start to have a serious impact on equities and probably banks. I mean, every day those bond yields go higher, bond prices go lower, unrealized losses at banks continue to grow. There's also a risk that there is a sweep with the election and, and maybe we don't have a split Congress makeup and maybe that leads to more fears about inflation and deficit spending and doom and gloom outlooks, right? That's possible. That's already what the bond market is saying. But it's possible that could continue for a while until we're proven otherwise. VIX is at 21.88. That's high. That's really high. And I can also say that after the election, no matter who wins, you're probably due for a pull down in yields. You're probably due for a correction downwards in yields. I can also say the Fed's going to be very dovish Thursday. And I can say that yeah, today's jobs report was not great, but Wall Street gave it the benefit of the doubt that Boeing impacted it, the hurricanes impacted 
the jobs report that maybe it's not until the next jobs report where we really get Wall Street that that panics about the economy. If we get another bad jobs report, like if 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 we get a uh, revision that takes October's jobs report negative and we get a maybe a really low jobs report for November, I mean, that's when the markets could freak out a little bit more. But I could totally see in the near term a relief rally for, uh, you know, bonds. I could see the VIX coming down as uncertainty ends, which could lead to stocks rising. And honestly, if I told you I had any idea what's going to happen with certainty, I don't. The only thing I know is we are in a higher risk environment. Certain asset classes are not behaving in a rational way. You could say they're unhinged or derailed, or you could say that we're at the start of that. Honestly, might be a little bit of both. Definitely, we are in a higher risk environment and being prepared for that, obviously your situation is different than mine and yours is different than the next guy's, but being prepared in your own way is what you want to do right now. I called out this 10% correction when markets were at all-time highs. We are now down 3% from all-time highs and the odds start to grow that we could fall closer to that 10% level, especially again, if we break that 50 day moving average and actually close below that history tends to tell us in recent years, that's not when the selling stops, it would correct likely further from there. But with all of that said, let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section, hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.